Mir, nonchalantly, pops out some tablets and starts eating as she glances at Inu, which in Japanese means a dog, and asks him with a smile if he would like some tablets to freshen up. Inu seems annoyed and asks her to stop calling him Inu-kun, but also accepts her offer. Nair asks why isn't Inu giving her his hand to take the tablets. With a condescending look on her face, she orders Inu to eat it from her hand without using his own. Inu, baffled by such an order, outright rejects it saying he can't act like a dog and in front of public as well. Nair's eyes narrow down and in the same condescending tone, she asks Inu if he wishes to defy her with a body that can't resist. Inu looks away and tries his best to not do it, but ends up giving in and eats it from her hand. Inu <laughs> feels embarrassed and considers this a disgrace, while Nair laughs and comments on his actions being forced, to which Inu gets angry and says that she was the one who forced him. Inu is annoyed and says he's going back to work. Nair suggests that they should have dinner together and asks when can she drop by. Inu gasps and tells her that he isn't some salaryman who can take off whenever he wants every day and that he feels sad even saying that. He says that unpaid overtime suits a corporate slave like him and that Nair should not drop by whenever she wants at the same time. As he is lecturing her, he is baffled when Nair shows him a picture of him hugging her and commands that Inu comes home at the same time every day. <gasps> Inu, age 24, is scared and says that for various reasons he is being raised by a high school girl. Back at the office, Inu is being yelled at by his superior for giving in a shabby proposal and to redo it today. Inu seems like he is about to give up and thinks to himself that he wants to die somehow. <sighs> As he is being lectured, he starts his internal monologue of how it is his third year working for this slave-driving corporation, working 20 says in a row. He lives in a property that costs 49,000 yen a month and he has 89,000 yen saved up. He is 24 and has been single ever since. And this is what makes up the life of Inuasaki Ken. While sitting out of his office on the stairs, he opens up a drink and continues his monologue of how his days consist of constant hard work and fueling himself by energy drinks. He has no time for a relationship so he is just stuck between his house and company. Plunging into existential crisis, he wonders that his life is the same as dying and what is he even living for? If he could just pass out and be hospitalized somehow, he could finally sleep without a care. But since humans are robust, he won't just pass out accidentally. <sighs> Exhausted, he states that he has overtime today as well and that tomorrow will mark the 21st day in a row and how being a corporate slave is painful. Inu, with a worn-out face, is finally able to call it a day and as he is walking back home, he comments on his life being painful enough and that he won't be able to make it home because he feels so tired that he is going to collapse. He spots a convenience store and decides to buy something for himself and to find a nearby place to sit and relax for a bit. He gets himself a beer and some snacks and finds a place to sit down but he quickly spots a couple walking by flirting with each other. Inu stares a bit but tries to shake it off by swinging his head and telling himself constantly to not be jealous. He says that these guys have a right to have girlfriends. They get to know them through friends, deepen their bonds, confessing and ultimately succeeding in staying together. He continues by saying that these couples have a romantic relationship which goes through a never-ending journey so obviously they have the right to flirt. Inu says that he does not have this willpower to do this right now as he is overburdened with work and bringing love in his life would make it more and more difficult. Inu wonders if his life will continue like this eventually reaching the age of 304,050 and dying alone. He apologizes to his family that the Inu Bosaki family will end with his generation. As he opens his can of beer, he wonders living an otherwise normal life seems like a pain as well and says that he just wants to die tomorrow and be in peace. After a long chug, he takes a breath and says that he was just kidding because if he dies, his parents would cry. He gets even more depressed by the fact that he vents by saying he will die and doesn't even have the guts to actually die and how his existence is insignificant. He suddenly cheers up and screams that if he saves up a million yen, he will quit his job by slapping his resignation letter in his boss's face. The alcohol and his fatigue finally hit him and he passes out saying the world is spinning. As he lies there with a content expression, someone approaches him. Inu wakes up to an unfamiliar ceiling and wonders where he is. He looks to his left and finds a girl listening to music on her phone. The girl also notices him and asks if he is awake, calling him Big Brother. Inu is startled by her presence and screams, asking her who she is. 
The girl introduces herself and says that her name is Karusu Nir, and he can just call him Nir. Inu is surprised and starts looking around the room and wonders where he is and what situation is he in. He notices exquisite decorations, a double bed, pink lighting, a tissue box near the pillow and an adult condom. He finally wonders if this is one of the rumored love hotels. <laughs> Nair teases him and asks what is he acting so suspicious for, and is this his first time in a love hotel? Emu, embarrassed, is taken aback and bursts that there is no way this is his first time in a Kansai dialect. Putting his finger on his nose, wondering, Inu confidently says that he is sure that after his 20th day of work in a row, he felt exhausted and rested on the way to his home. But he does not remember anything after that. Nair is a bit disappointed, and with a pout says that he can't be serious after doing such a thing with her. Inu stutters and asks what exactly did he do to her, calling her by her name. Nair says that she has photographic evidence and shows him a picture on her phone where Inu is passed out and Nair took a selfie, posing, both seemingly very happy. Ah! Inu screams if that is the face he made after losing his virginity. Nair laughs and confirms her suspicion of him being an actual virgin. <laughs> Inu, who seems to have lost all of hope wonders where his stages of being in love went of getting to know someone from others, becoming lovers, marrying them. But he apparently had skipped all these stages and had lost his virginity. And what bothers him most is if he actually had slept with a high school girl and wonders what the legality of his situation. Nair seems to be having fun and says that if this tale of his underage indecency got out his life will be over. Inu has a panic attack and starts rolling on the bed like a child, repeating that even though this is a swindle he is going to die. <laughs> Nair is amused by his reaction and finally breaks his tension by saying that it was all a joke and that they hadn't slept together. She tells him that he had collapsed on the road so she bought him to this love hotel to rest. Inu is relieved to know that he is innocent, but is depressed again that he is still a virgin. Nair, upon seeing his gloomy face, asks him why is he depressed. Inu looks at Nair and wonders that even if it was for the sake of taking care of him, her picking a love hotel to just rest up is quite astonishing, and judging from her appearance, she seems to have done this quite a bit. He invades high school students for having an easy and carefree life. Nair comments about Inu's intense eye bags, and he replies it's because of constant work and not getting enough sleep. Nair giggles and asks that is it because he is a corporate slave. She starts laughing and starts the average rant of corporate slaves that even though they find jobs after graduating from a good university, their job is at a slave-driving corporation and how he is being raised by the corporation, all the while making fun of him. She deals the final blow by saying there's no dreams or hope for him. But when she looks at Anu, his eyes are filled with tears and he starts crying. <laughs> Nair is startled by his reaction and feels bad for making him cry and starts apologizing right away. Inu covers his face and says that he also hadn't expected such a life. He tells her that he also used to have dreams of becoming a sports player or a tab star or author. But as he approached adulthood, he got a reality check and his hopes and dreams started narrowing down eventually, disappearing. He realized that he hadn't made much of his life and that he had nothing. As time went by, he found a job but before he realized where it was, it was too late. He wonders what is wrong with his life. Is it like a bad video game? With his head down, depressed, Inu confesses that his biggest regret is that he couldn't become anyone meaningful. As he finishes, Nair pulls him towards her and rests his head on her chest. With a gentle smile, Nair consoles Inu how he has been trying his best every day, and that alone is very admirable. Inu's eyes fill up and he feels relieved after getting validation. He feels relaxed knowing that he just needed someone to praise him. As Inu closes his eyes, he hears a camera shutter and sees that Nair has gotten a somewhat suspicious photo of them. With a devious smile, Nair asks that if this photo got leaked what would happen to his life. Inu is scared for his life and imagines himself on TV for underage indecency and feels dumb for being honey-trapped. Inu, worried, confronts her about her motives and if it's money she needs to which she replies that she does not want anything like that. Nair grabs Inu's tie and pulls him close to her and demands that she let her raise him. Huh? Inu is confused and asks what does she exactly mean. <laughs> Nair smirks and tells him that he will be under her command if he agrees. From what he eats to when he sleeps, everything will be monitored by her. And that he is not allowed to say I want to die without her permission. Inu shouts that it's like being a domestic animal and his dignity as a human being will be shattered. 
Nair pulls up his tie, almost choking him, and says that he has no right to refuse, and calls him Inu Khan. She says that she looked at his business card while he was sleeping and that she knows her name. She tells him that it's perfect for a pet name. Nair exerts her dominance by saying that there is nothing else that he can do, and if he agrees, he should shove his consent by saying woof. Inu is embarrassed and reluctant at first but gives in and whoops. Nair cheers up and starts patting his head and commends that he said it very nicely. Inu wonders how he was now trapped by being raised by a company and a high school girl and it felt disgraceful. Inu's face between Nair's thighs as he gives her a shoulder ride. Nair who seemingly is having fun, orders Inu to go right and comments on Inu being useless as he wonders how things came to this. Inu working in his office states that he is a slave working in a black company, but he has a secret he can't tell anyone that he is being raised by a 16-year-old high school girl. He receives a text of Nair who orders him to come. As Inu reaches the park, Nair is sitting on a bench and says that he's late. Inu panting as he had to run, says that she shouldn't just call him out of nowhere in the middle of work as he has a lot of work. He continues that unlike free students, adults have responsibilities and he shouldn't be disturbed if she has no work for him. Nair with a smirk show him the staged photo, effectively blackmailing him of underage indecency with a minor. Inu states that he can't defy Nier and their relation now is that of a master and pet. Inu and Nier are having ice cream but Inu is disappointed by the fact that he can't say no to his boss and a high school girl who is eight years younger than him and that he feels pathetic to the point he could die. Nair comments on the ice cream being delicious and Inu agrees. Inu is worried that he's spending his valuable time with a high school girl in a part hanging out and that he should head back soon. <laughs> But they suddenly hear a scream and it's a little girl crying because her balloon is stuck in a tree twig. Nair seizes this chance and orders Inu like a dog to go get it. Inu surprised asks if she was really ordering him and he can't do it as he is short on time. But he is again blackmailed by the photo from Nair. Nair consoles the little girl to stop crying and that Inu will get it for her. Inu inspecting the tree wonders if he can climb it. Inu tries and latches onto the tree like a bug to which Nair bursts out laughing, and that he seems like a cicada who is fused with the tree. Inu feels embarrassed and his body gives up and says that they should try something else. Nair comes up and asks Inu to sit on his knees. Inu wonders why but obeys. As soon as he sits down, she puts her thighs on his shoulders using him as a ladder. Nair asks him to stand and that now they should be able to reach it with him carrying her like that. Inu immediately annoyed snaps back at her that she shouldn't use others as a ladder without asking. Nair smirks and bends over to face him and asks him if he is disobeying her master. He agrees and Nair gives him instructions of where to go and what to do and constantly reminds him of how useless he is as he can't focus. Inu is embarrassed and distracted by Nair's thighs being so close to his face. Nair gets annoyed and pulls his ear and orders him to go right and focus. Inu in pain says that he understands so she should let go of her ear. They finally manage to get the balloon down and hand it to the girl and Inu says that he is exhausted. The little girl seems really happy and thanks both of them with a big smile. Inu feels nice and says that it has been a long time since someone thanked him. Hey. He asks Nair to get off but she says that he is at an advantage as he gets to enjoy a high school girl's eyes for free. Inu says that he doesn't care about the perks and is sure that she is doing this on purpose. Nair proposes the idea that they should walk around the park like this. Inu is annoyed and asks what kind of a humiliation play is this and that he does not have time for this. Nair shows him the picture again and he immediately submits and starts walking as people around notice them. Nair compliments Inu on being a comfortable ride and this was going according to her expectations. Inu says that she shouldn't have such expectations as this is the first time they are doing this. Inu tired says that she is too heavy and carrying 50 kilograms is too much for a corporate slave like him. Nair offended and embarrassed, tells him that it's rude and this is the problem with virgins as she pulls his ears again. Inu in pain, tells her to stop calling him a virgin. Hey. Inu then gets scolded after returning to work because he took an hour off, all the while thinking to himself that it's hard being a corporate slave and a high school girl's pet at the same time. Inu is panting as he reaches the bus stop. He says that he overslept accidentally and he is going to be late for work and wonders if he can reach in time by taking the bus. Nair comes running behind him and kicks him down calling his name. 
Inyo is surprised and asks what she is doing here. She smirks and shows him her phone and how she used tracked his location through Guess. Inyo baffled, comments that she's stalking him. Naya responds that she's just lying and it's a coincidence because she lives nearby. Inyo wonders her living nearby would threaten his days off from job. Naya says that she was surprised that Inyo was knocked down by the kick and asks if he's having breakfast daily. Inyo says that he skipped because he overslept today. Naya says that he won't have energy to go through the day and pulls out her bag full of snacks. Inyo is surprised that she has so much snacks and asks if she treats high school as a field trip. Naya says that she will toss chocolates at him and he should catch them with his mouth without using his hands. Inyo <gasps> at first denies that why should he perform such tricks, but quickly agrees gritting his teeth when Naya shows him the photo again. She tosses a chocolate and Inu gets it the first time. Nair is very happy with his reaction and claps and commends him. Inu says that he is tasting chocolate and shame both at the same time. Nair then pulls out a rice cracker and says that it's perfect for him since it's shaped like a rice cracker and quickly throws it at him. Inu again catches it flawlessly with just his mouth and is even amazed at himself for accomplishing it. Nair is equally amazed and compliments him for being a god at this. Inu quickly snaps back and says that this is no time to be hyped and that he is being roped into performing tricks. Nair happily states that his transformation into a dog is going great while going through the snacks from her bag. She pulls out a packet of packy sticks, but Inu quickly rejects because catching it with just his mouth will jam his throat. Nair thinks of another way and puts one stick in her mouth and proposes a packy game. Inu is baffled and embarrassed as she wants him to eat it from the opposite side. Just as he is about to deny it, Nair silently blackmails him by just showing him her phone. They start and both start chewing slowly, but Inu is very conscious and feels embarrassed as they both start getting closer and closer. He is afraid that it might result into them actually kissing. Just as their lips are about to touch, Inu quickly pulls his head back breaking the stick and relive that he successfully dodged it. Nair is disappointed and calls him a coward with a straight face. Inu is struck down by her words and embarrassingly insinuates that if that had continued, they might have kissed. Nair giggles and says that it's disgusting that he had actually thought of what was going to happen. As he starts recovering from her condescending behavior, Inu's bus appears and he jumps up saying that he forgot that he was waiting for his bus. Before leaving, Nair offers to go another round of the game, but Inu says no. He gets late and gets scolded by his boss. Inu is hard at work in his office at 11 p.m. He states that he has to do overtime day in and day out and that he'll miss the last train home. He continues that he's working overtime with his boss and he doesn't seem to be in a good mood. His boss shouts at him asking if he is making any progress. To which he replies yes and that he is waiting for the client to get back to him. Inu gets a call and to his surprise it's Nair. He picks up the call and whispers hello. Nair asks what's wrong with his voice while he asks where is she. To which she replies the bathtub. Inu embarrassed asks why is she calling him from there. Nair giggles and asks if he got excited imagining her naked. Inu embarrassed says that she's too young to be saying this. As he's talking to Nair, his boss comes up to him and asks if he's taking a personal call during work hours. Inu gets tense and quickly starts talking to Nair as if she's a client from work so that his boss doesn't suspect him. Nair doesn't understand what's going on and asks why he's being so polite. Inu's boss leaves him thinking it's a work-related call. Inu gets relaxed. Nair asks if he's still at the office working this late. Inu replies yes in an obedient manner and hopes that Nair will hang up the phone now. Nair understands the situation and decides to tease Inu about it. She asks what will happen if her co-workers were to find out about them which will put him in big trouble. She states that it's already 11 and he's working this late so it must be tough being a corporate slave and Inu always has to find answers to show his boss that he is on a work-related call. He says that being in a company he is always ready to exert himself to the utmost but also wonders how it's extremely painful. Never tells him about her day that she went to karaoke with her friends, ate at a family restaurant, and just got back home. Inu wonders how easy students have it. Then Nair exclaims that she's run out of shampoo and wonders where she put the new bottle. Inu on call replies that he does not know and wonders how is he even supposed to know that. He says that he needs a way to end the call and all excited says that he has uploaded the required the files on the FEMP server. Nair wonders what Inu is on about. 
Enum continues that he is sorry for the inconvenience and if his client could wait as he needs time to verify the documents and that he will get back to him shortly so he can end the call. Nair understands what he's trying to do and asks him if she should upload their photo on Twitter and see the reaction. Inu baffled, apologizes. Nair empathizes with Inu and admits that she has been hard on him Sue as a treat, she is sending him something foul. Inu wonders what could it be because she is in the bathtub and he suddenly gets a message. He reluctantly opens it only to find a picture of an actual foul meaning a chicken. Nair laughing hard at her successful prank asks if she got his hopes up and apologizes, whilst calling him a pervert. Nair asks if he really wanted to see her naked that much. Inu defeated and humiliated thinks that he should really get back to work and Nair drops the call by telling him not to overwork himself. Inu during his break takes out a drink from the vending machine and wonders what Nair's motive is as he gets another image by her. He is sure that it will be another foul image and as he is about to open it, his boss comes to him and orders him to read the documents he's handing him. The boss expresses his frustration of youngsters always being on their phone and Inu just blurts out his drink looking at the photo. The boss quickly asks him what is it that made him do this and Inu hides his phone behind him, saying that it's nothing. Nair is doing her homework and gets excited that she's finally solved a certain problem thanks to Inu. She then passes a sarcastic comment on Inu's intelligence that it seems like he was barely smart enough to pass college. Inu frustrated sips his tea and wonders why he has skipped work to help her with homework. Nair asks Inu to help him solve the next question, but he snaps back that she should let him go back to work. Nair shows him her phone and that he can't say no to her and he has no choice but to accept. Nair yawns and says that her work has made her sleepy, so she's going to sleep for 10 minutes and goes to sleep. Inu is frustrated with her antics and wants to get back to work because of his boss. But he notices her phone just lying there unlocked. He takes this chance and picks it up. He starts looking for the fabricated photo she uses to blackmail him and wonders that if he could just delete that he'll be free. By taking a quick glance at Nair and confirming that she's asleep, he quickly finds the photo and deletes it, feeling like a free man in the middle of a restaurant. Nair wakes up to find her phone in Inu's hands. When she asked him about it, he laughs freely and says that he won't be treated like a pet anymore and he has deleted the photo. Nair is struck with disbelief, can't find the photo, and is disappointed while Inu is all happy and says that it feels good to have returned the favor after being blackmailed so much. Nair, now with a nonchalant expression, asks Inu if he knows about the cloud. Inu's cocky smile quickly fades away and he replies that he knows what the cloud is. Nair turns her phone to him and shows him the same photo saying that she had uploaded it to the cloud and can recover it whenever she wants. Inu is yet again met with failure and realizes that it was all her trick to pretend to sleep. Nair takes off her show and puts her left foot on Inu's crotch under the table. Inu is baffled and surprised and asks her to stop. Nair with a smirk on her face starts pushing his crotch and says that as punishment should she cut it off. Inu gasps in disbelief and since he doesn't want to be castrated, he quickly bows down slamming his head on the table apologizing. Nair laughs it off and commends him for being a good boy, and then lectures him how he should never snoop on someone's phone as it's the worst thing one could do. Inu wonders isn't blackmailing someone with a fabricated photo the worst thing you could do. Inu is happy that he has finished his work by 7 pm and that he can go home early. He feels like it's a miracle that he won't have to take the last train as he has been doing lately. As he is about to head out his co-worker, Nakamaru, says that if he's going home, he'll go with him and that they should go out for drinks. Inu agrees and the both head out. As they're walking out, they feel relieved that they got out before more work could be handed to them and how it would be great if every day could be like this. Inu asks Nakamaru if he has any good place in mind for drinks, but Nakamaru says that he has to make a quick call home before they can go for drinks and walks ahead. Suddenly, Nair comes up behind Inu and from the fear of being found out he quickly pulls her away from the crowd behind a vending machine, while Nakamura turns behind only to find Inu not there anymore. He walks further ahead trying to find him. Inu says that it was a close call and how his life would be over if he got found out all the while unaware that his hand is covering Nair's face. Nair gets annoyed and bites his hand and when Inu expresses his pain, she says that she did sue because he was being rude to his master. Inu is a bit down that she had to run into him on the one day he left early from work. Nair asks why is that a problem as he makes her to be some kind of monster. 
She then starts teasing him because she has his phone, and he apologizes and asks for his phone back. Their sound attracts a police officer, and he comes up to them and asks them what their relationship they have. Inu freaks out and thinks that an adult and a minor hanging out together at night is definitely fishy. Nair is excited seeing a police office in person and says that he looks cool while Inu tires to think of a way to get out of this situation. He realizes whatever he says, whether it's telling the truth, pretending to be strangers, or making up a lie on the spot, will get them in trouble no matter what. Nair as calm and composed as ever just says that they are brother and sister to which the policeman asks for their eye to validate the claim Nair had just made. They both give their eyes and Inu freaks out that it's over for them because their family name is not the same. But much to Inu's and the police officer's surprise, Nair's name on the eye is Inubosuk Nair. The police officer, after making sure that they both are siblings, apologizes for the inconvenience but Nair in turn thanks the police officer for being diligent with his duty. When the officer leaves, Inu asks Nair about the name and she tells him that she had prepared a countermeasure in advance if they were ever in such a condition. She had scanned her original id, changed her last name, and replaced it on the top with the real one. Inu is surprised that she is so cunning but her cunningness saved them. He says that her name makes it seem like they are married but thinks he shouldn't have said that as it seems creepy. Nir is disgusted and gets up turning her face and says gross to his face and that he shouldn't get ahead of himself with these delusions and calls him a cringy virgin. Inu agrees that he shouldn't have said that and to stop calling him a virgin out loud. Inu says that all that tension has made him hungry and Nair asks him to treat her, calling him big brother, to which Inu says that if he has to feed her as well, then he doesn't want such a little sister. Inu Basaki leaves the convenience store with some food for supper. Worried about catching the last train, he glances at his watch with uncertainty. Suddenly, loud stomps approach closer and closer to Inu and he looks back to see something terrifying, another high school girl. With adorable space buns and a short skirt, the girl's eyes glow bright with resolve as she charges headfirst towards Inu with a roundhouse kick. She warns him to prepare himself and he is barely able to dodge her dangerous attack by throwing away the supper he just bought and jumping out of the way. With a loud thud, the girl crashes to the ground behind him and manages to injure herself. Shocked by the whole situation, Inu frantically asks the girl who she is. He decides to run away before she regains her composure and attacks him again, but just as he tries to leave, another figure approaches and stands in his way. Another high school girl with short black hair appears with a stoic expression and blocks Inu's path, calling him Mr. Salaryman. She calls out to the other girl Jinko, asking why she went for the finishing blow on him when she was planning on only intimidating him. Without warning, Jinko turns to Inu and reprimands him for not letting her land the kick. Her obvious accent makes Inu wonder if she is from Cantu. Noticing their foul moods, Inu wonders if the high school girls are trying to extort him. Inu wonders what sin he could have possibly committed in his past life to deserve first being turned into a pet and then being extorted by high school girls. Running out of options, Inu decides to confront the girls directly, timidly asking them if they're after his money. Both Jinko and Riza are shocked by his question and start criticizing Inu for using money to get close to people. Confused, Inu asks the girls who they're talking about and Jinko begrudgingly replies, accusing Inu of using money to make their dear friend Nair do unspeakable things. With a twist of fate, Nair appears behind Inu as the confrontation is going on. Everyone hears Jinko's accusation loud and clear and appear to be completely flabbergasted. <laughs> Suddenly, Nair rusts into laughter as she asks how her friends misunderstood the situation like this. She wonders how they could even think that she was in a relationship with Inu for monetary incentives. Jinko and Riza explain that anyone would come to the same conclusion after spotting their high school friend wandering around with an employed adult man late at night. Trying to clear up the misunderstanding, Nair introduces Inu to the two girls, Risa and Jinko, as her friends. Suspicious, the girls ask about Nair and Inu's relationship, and Inu is immediately intimidated. He thinks that if Nair tells her friends that she treats him like a pet, they will join in and he will get bullied by all three of them simultaneously. Surprisingly, Nair decides to keep their relationship details ambiguous and explains that Inu is her childhood Oni-san. Inu is shocked at her response, wondering about her intentions for lying to them. Nair does not back down, following up the lie with a whole backup story. 
She casually makes up an entire childhood tale about growing up in the same neighborhood as Inu, claiming that the two of them have always been close, and she was even saved by him. Inu is conflicted by her response and hopes that she would stop piling on the lies. <sighs> Jinko and Riza are relieved that their dear friend isn't being manipulated by an older man using money. Jinko cheerfully turns to Riza and states that she was worried for no reason while Riza explains that it was Jinko who went berserk at the sight of Nair and Ainu together. With the misunderstanding cleared up, the girls decide to head home as they bid their farewell to Nair. As they walk off as quickly as they appeared, Nair tries to explain that although their introduction was a bit chaotic, they are actually nice girls. Inu wastes no time bringing up what's on his mind. Wondering about her intentions, he turns to Nair and states that he was surprised by her keeping their relationship a secret. Nair puts on a dangerous smile as she stares at Inu and claims that their master-servant dynamic is a secret between the two of them. Inu is flustered at her answer and complains that although that sounds sweet, it's still a bad experience and Nair laughs it off. Looking around, Inu suddenly notices the disappearance of something crucial. His supper that he bought from the store is gone, and he wonders what happened. Meanwhile, Jinko enjoys a delicious bread bun, explaining that she picked it up from the road. Inu collapses to the ground as he comes to term with his demise, stating that this is it for him. Nair, dressed up in a tracksuit, sits down near him and teases him for collapsing after only three kilometers of jogging. Exhausted, Inu looks up at the girl with a deathly stare, declaring that although she is practicing for the school marathon, it doesn't make sense that he needs to go on practice, runs with her early in the morning. Inu starts complaining persistently, arguing that he would like to get more sleep, albeit for a few minutes. Inu confidently claims that as a working adult, he has no stamina for outdoor activities and totally sucks at parties. Nagar taunts him, explaining that he shouldn't be proud of his physical inabilities. She states that this is even more reason to keep running and staying in shape. She turns back and states that the most important asset of a working adult is their body and he is going to ruin his if he keeps living in comfort. Inu is surprised as Nir's concern, wondering if she's worried about his health. Inu's hopes are quickly shattered when Nair explains that it's the job of pet owners to ensure that their pets get regular exercise. Inu is frustrated at her answer, stating that he is still being treated as a pet after all this. Running ahead, Nair instructs Inu to follow behind her and continue their jog as he frantically gives chase. Nair turns back and casually tells Inu to pick up the pace as he struggles to catch his breath. He wonders that it must be nice to be so young and packed with energy. He complains that when he runs for even a little bit, his limbs begin to give out. Suddenly, Something catches his eye and he looks over to see Nir's giant assets swaying around as she runs. The sudden shock of the sight causes Inu's legs to nearly give out as he falls further behind Nair and states that he is just finding it a bit hard keeping up. Realizing the two giant traps laid out for his eyes at the front, Inu decides to follow closely behind Nair instead of running beside her to keep himself from getting distracted. His plan backfires when he suddenly notices Nair's back and the nape of her neck dripping with swear as she runs. Inu quickly becomes flustered as he realizes that running behind her is also not a good idea. Nagar turns around and taunts Inu for lighting behind her as he tries to explain that she has no idea about his pain. After a good workout, the two of them stop their jog to get some rest. Nagar grabs a drink from a vending machine and revels in excitement while Inu struggles to ignore his body aches from all that running. He is embarrassed at his own lack of stamina when he suddenly notices Nair offering her remaining drink to him. She hands it to him, instructing him to rehydrate, and Inu accepts happily when suddenly the realization hits him. His cheeks become flushed as he realizes that Nair handed him the same bottle that she just drank from. He is embarrassed by the thought of an indirect kiss with Nair, and she reads him like a book, smiling menacingly and asking if he is embarrassed about the indirect kiss. Inu realizes that this whole thing was a setup just to catch him in this trap. Deciding not to back down, Inu gathers all his resolve and goes straight for a drink from the bottle. Nir, who is surprised by his courage, has no idea what's coming next. Inu suddenly turns the table on Nir, handing her the bottle with some water still left and telling her to have herself a drink. He thinks that he was able to pull one on her as he waits for her to blush and complain in embarrassment, but Nair is unbothered by his counterattack. She casually takes the bottle and gulps it down, taunting Inu for being childish and stating that only children worry about indirect kisses. 
Nara laughs at Ainu and tells him to get moving as the pair head back home. The exhausted Inu wonders if they can call a cab, but Nara won't allow him to take the easy way out. Later at work, Inu can barely move a muscle as he struggles to recover from the exhaustion. The chaos of the workplace is never ending. Exhausted from all the work, Inu sits on his desk lifelessly. When Inu is finally done with work for the day, he sits hopelessly at the side of a stairway, drinking away his worries and thinking about his predicament. He explains that as stress increases in the office, he gets more and more tired and the only thing he looks forward to is having drinks during dinner, playing games and browsing different sites. He wonders if his life is too boring, stating that the future looks bleak to him. He also wonders why he has to be Nier's pet on top of all this. Suddenly, someone pokes him in the back and as he frantically turns around, he sees the person responsible for half of his misery. Somehow, Nair has found him and she teases him, stating that if he sleeps in a place like this, he'd is sure to get dragged to a love hotel. Inu moves away and exclaims that only she could do something like that. Nair immediately catches him and turns his words against him, stating that the reason he was moping around here was because he was hoping to get dragged to a hotel by her. She calls him a pervert for wanting to go with her again. Inu gets flustered and exclaims that he would never go to a hotel with her again because she would probably take pictures of him again and exploit him more. Nair smiles obliviously, joking that she has been rejected by him. She notices the can of bears on the ground and asks Inu why he is sitting here drinking so much. Inu brushes her off, claiming that he just felt like it. Catching on to the situation, Nair asks Inu if something bad happened at work, stating that she is there to listen to his complaints because a good pet owner always relieves their pet's stress. Annoyed, Inu scolds Nair for offering to relieve his stress after she was one of the reasons for causing it. Nair listens to him closely as she smiles with curious eyes. Inu, who is a bit too drawn for his own good, can't help but let his thoughts out. He starts complaining incessantly about his life, claiming that he works all the time fulfilling the selfish requests of his boss, something he doesn't get paid enough for according to him. He claims that of course he can't take it, it would be too much to handle for anyone. Nair continues to listen silently as Inu rants hopelessly. He claims that he can't just run away from the stress because adults have responsibilities. He states that he is decently good at his job, which causes problems for him as he needs to decide if he should appear reliable or not. He claims that a high school student like Nier couldn't understand these problems and wonders why he blurted out all his problems in front of her. Suddenly, Nair wraps her arms around him from behind as she embraces him gently. Confused, Inu looks at her and she smiles at him, stating that this is his reward for working so hard every day. <gasps> Inu is completed flustered by the sudden affection, he can't help but feel excited as her body presses up against his back. She claims that she will inject some high school girl powers into him to cheer him up and Inu questions the shady powers she is talking about as he struggles to calm down. Suddenly, she pushes him away, saying that the injection is complete. Inu is surprised by the sudden shove and complains about it. Suddenly, Nair asks the obvious question, if he wants to quit his job then why doesn't he? Inu tries to explain that an adult can't do something so irresponsible but Nair is completely oblivious to the situation. She exclaims that she banned him from dying but not from quitting his job, smiling wide she states that he will still be her pet whether he is employed or not. Nair gets up and says that being responsible is fine, but it's meaningless if you have to bear too much stress and burst in the end from the pressure. She boasts about her genius advice as the irresponsible high school girl and asks him if he'll quit his job. Inu exclaims that he won't quit, especially not after being told to do so by a high school girl. Despite his rejection, he is clearly cheered up by her words as the life returns to him. Nair teases him, demanding compensation for her power injection. 5,000 yen per shot. Inu is disappointed by her preposterous demands, exclaiming that a high school girl like her shouldn't be doing this at all. We see a flashback of Nair's childhood in which she is happy that Inu came to her again. Inu only came because Nair had stolen his student ID. Nair looks at his card and is unable to properly read his name, and he corrects her saying his name is Inu Asaki and taunts her that a lower grader like her can't read it. This angers Nair who asks if he's mocking her and threatens to pull the buzzer which scares Inu and he admits that it was his fault and offers to listen to everything she says, so begs her to not do it. Nair gets mischievous and tells him to play with her. 
The two then play different games together while Nair thinks that for a loner like her Inubasaki is her first ever friend, benefactor, someone to look up to, and also her dog. She even gets on top of him to play horse which annoys him a lot. She shouts at him to go faster and calls him Inu Oni-chan. This name annoys him a lot, so he asks her to not call him that but she strikes him with a stick and threatens him that if he doesn't hurries up and go faster, she'll spank him. This interaction caused something to awaken inside her. Nair has lots of fun playing but Inu gets tired. However, he spots that Nair's bag is unguarded and seizes the opportunity. Nair happily tells Inu to play again tomorrow but hears him shouting that he has gotten it as he shows her that he got his hands on her buzzer and while getting it he also managed to get back his student ID. This shocks Nair a lot but Inu gets happy as he's now finally free. Nair cries and asks Inu to give the buzzer an ID back but Inu declines and smiles. He pats her and tells her that she wants to play with someone then she doesn't need to resort to such threats and all she needs to say is let's play together and if she does that, then he would also play with her, but before hey. he finishes the sentence a policeman puts his hand on Inu's shoulder. The police receive reports of a person in a school uniform driving a grade schooler around so asks Inu to come to the station with him at which Inu begins to panic thinking he's now doomed. Inu tries to talk his way out of trouble by saying that there's been a misunderstanding but the officer doesn't listen and drags Inu with him. Because of the authorities' powers, Nair's relationship with Inu had come to an abrupt end. Nair realizes that it was wrong for her to be that young so she needs to wait until the time that society will allow and her methods were too simple and acknowledges her naivety and thinks that taking away someone's tool is a poor man's strategy and gets ready as she needs to do something even better next time and be thorough in her dealing with Inu. Nair finds Inu sleeping so pokes his cheek to wake him up and berates him that no matter how old he becomes, he will still be a useless human being but admits that it's one of the parts that she loves about him. She initiates her plan to drag Inu to a love hotel and tries to find a cart nearby to use. Later Nair has Inu massage her and directs him to massage properly while calling him Inu Oni-chan and he follows her commands and calls her Miss Customer but he realizes what she just called him and asks why she called him that instead of Inu-kun. Nair dismisses it as a mistake. Inu gets annoyed and tells her that his name isn't Inu but is an elegant one called as Inubasaki Ken but Nair doesn't stop calling him Inu and provides further directions. Nair wants to exchange numbers so they can stay in contact with each other so asks him to lend her his smartphone so she can input her number in it and Inu agrees. Nair quickly puts her number in his phone and tells him to make sure to reply when she calls him next time. Inu sighs as he realizes that Nair is serious about raising him as her pet. In reality, Nair was happy because she didn't find any female contacts in Inu's phone besides her and his mother's. Hey. Nair greets Inu, but he replies grimly that he's 24 and a part of society, so asks her to stop calling him that as it's very embarrassing. Nair asks Inu if he has any other requests and points out that his full name is Inubasaki Ken, so gives him the nickname Inubu, but he asks to be called Inu instead of that. Inubasaki Ken despite being 24 years old still remains single and lies in a cheap apartment working for long hours but only makes a meager salary and is stuck as a corporate slave and at the moment is keeping a massive secret. Suddenly he gets a message from Nair asking him to come. Inu panics as he thought that Nair would message him soon. Inu gets up and announces that he's going out for a meeting but his boss hey. shouts at him asking about the proposal and tells him to settle it first. Inu says that he's done and tells the boss to look over it. The boss is surprised to find that the proposal is already done and thinks that Inu didn't have much time so it's probably not good but is shocked as it turns out to be fine. Later Nair spots Inu and apologizes to him for calling him while he's working. Inu's big secret is that he's being raised by a high school girl. Inu tells Nair that he had to finish his work in a hurry because of her. Nair pulls out a chalker and asks to go on a walk. Seeing Nair hold a chalker makes Inu panic and asks who would take a walk while wearing a choker at which Nair says that then they will have to walk while holding hands. This makes Inu blush and he asks why they are holding hands. Nair replies that the owner has to lead the pet. Inu gets angry and says that he doesn't need a chalker or hand holding because he isn't a cat or dog so she shouldn't think that he will follow her everywhere. Nair says that if she doesn't lead him then he will just run off somewhere. Inu points out that walking outside while holding hands with a high schooler is so embarrassing for him that he might die. 
Nair shows him a picture of him shoving his face in her melons and asks if he prefers to die from embarrassment or stares of society. Inu is horrified at Nair pulling out her trump card, a fake picture she made to force Inu to become her pet. Ai now grabs Nair's hand and walks with her. She teases him asking if he'll follow his master obediently, which humiliates him greatly. Inu becomes sad as he tries to remember when was the last time he held a girl's hand and realizes that it was way back in his elementary school. Nair teases Inu by saying that his red face is very cute but Inu doesn't like the teasing and asks her to stop. While the two walk around by standards stare at them and Inu feels bad because of the staring and himself can't see many couples walking around while holding hands so wonders why Nair isn't embarrassed or flustered by all this. Nair teases him again as she points out that they are being stared at so suggests that they should lock their arms but Inu declines. While walking together suddenly Inu lets go of Nair's hand which Nair doesn't likes but Inu suddenly changes his position to her other side. A car besides them at which she realizes that Inu moved because they are walking besides a road. Inu blushes and offers Nair to hold hands which makes her happy and she hits his rear and calls him a gentleman. Nair feels happy as she thinks that this was because of her teaching and feels proud at raising Inu to be this attentive. Hearing this Inu gets more confused. Nair points out that Inu won't get famous by acting gentlemanly but she's fine with it at which Inu asks if she's saying that he will remain single forever. Meanwhile, the chief stutters in awe of the quality of work Inu handed to him. A co-worker saw the chief stutter and praises Inu in his thoughts. The chief says that Inu did so well only because of his teaching and as he can now do things faster, then he should just give him more work and gives off an evil laugh. Hearing the chief's plan, the co-worker begins to feel bad for Inu. Inubasaki still hasn't realized that the faster he will finish his work, the more work will be thrown at him sending him into a never-ending downward spiral. Sakura, dressed in simple outgoing clothes, calls out to Inu and waves her hand with a smile on her face. She talks about how wonderful and clear the weather is. Inu with a deadpan expression on his face says that since it was his day off from work, he wanted to sleep until the evening without waking up. But he had to wake up because she called him out on his off day. She dismisses his by shaking her hand and laughing that it is fine. He won't be able to buy a date with a high school girl on his day off. He yells at her in surprised that even if one could afford to buy one does not mean that they should. He pauses at the word date, asking what she means by a date. In his internal monologue, he thinks about how she is going to do something extreme such as show who is the boss and who is the pet in their dynamic. He looks at the way she is dressed a half-sleeved turtleneck and short shorts with thigh socks and boots, considers how she looks in casual clothes. She notices him observing her and looks back at him with a playful expression on her face, almost smirking at him as she asks him what he is looking at. <gasps> he quickly dismisses her and turns his face away saying that he is not looking at her. She turns back and tells him that as usual, their destination is to go to the Love Hotel. But because she can finish her sentence, she hears a voice call out to her. She turns towards the source of the voice and sees Jinko and Riza and calls up to them. Jinko talks about how good of a coincidence this is because she was just about to hurt her anyway and then they ran into her. She laughs but stops as soon as she realizes Inu standing there and they both pause for a second because absolutely breaking all hell loose. She immediately turns to him saying that he is the guy that does compensating dates with Nier. At the same time, he yells at her saying that it was a misunderstanding. Risa stares blankly at him and bows down to apologize to him for the previous day. He bows down back to her and tells her that she really does not have anything to worry about as Jinko stares at him with an annoyed look on her face. Finally, she turns to Sakura and Inu and asks why the two of them are together hanging out. Sakura tells her that the two of them also coincidentally met each other. And Inu stares at her with a dumb look. His internal monologue he considers what she means by the meeting coincidentally and has an epiphany that in front of her friends he is her older childhood friends that is like a brother. The fact that they have a slave master relationship is a secret from everyone. Including her friends. He smirks and suddenly asks the four of them to hang out together. He thinks that if there are four of them then she won't be able to treat him like a pet and without the other two if he just pushed her away and went home then he does not know what she will do to him. He creates a plan with the four of them. Dinko agrees but tells him that he is the one who is in the way, not the other way around, and he is the only adult among three other high school girls. The four of them agree anyway and Jinko and Inu run off ahead. 
Risa looks back at Nair and tells her to come with them and notices a sour expression on Nair's face as she pouts at something. As the four of them wekle around the mall, play different games in the arcade, and even take pictures together, they finally sit down at a restaurant for some food and apparently Jinko and Inu hit it off and everyone is laughing at something. Jinko asks Nair the reason why she is not that energetic today, maybe she feels unwell. Nair with a spoon in her mouth tells her that she is fine in a calm tone. Inu smirks to himself as he drinks from his cup of tea, thinking that she must be frustrated by the fact that is not able to treat him like a pet and from time to time she should know what it feels like to be submissive. This might be a good learning experience for her. His train of thought is broken as Nair exclaims out loud that she spilled some cream, he looks at her with a confused look and sees the cream she spilled on her thigh. Thinking if it is normal for cream to fall like that, he takes a napkin in the hands, handing it to her. She just stares at him silently, and he notices her stare which tells him to clean it up by licking her thigh. He panics that she wants him to lick it off her thigh and disgrace himself in front of everyone else. He feels pressured to do it under her gaze and drops a spoon, pretending that it fell on its own and bends down to pick it up. During this act, he goes to lick up the cream on her thigh. But Jinko steps in asking Nair to share some of her parfait with her. This surprises Nair and she knocks her knee into his nose. He whines in pain and Jinko asks him what happened to him while Risa just observes from the sidelines. Risa thinks that there is something weird going on between Inu and Nair and wonders what their relationship is with each other. Inu stretches as he walks with his friend and exclaims how tired he is, his friend asks him isn't he glad that they got off work early that day, Inu asks Nakamaru whether he thinks the chief is giving Inu more work as of lately. Nakamaru looks away with a pained look on his face, telling him that he must be imagining things as he remembers their boss, saying that since Inu has been doing work faster, he is going to give him more work. Nakamaru tells him that maybe the boss has more expectations from Inu. But it does not change the fact that he feels pressured. Nakamaru asks him if he wants to grab a few drinks together, but Inu tells him that he is going to head home. To which Nakamaru asks if he has got a new girlfriend or something and upon hearing the word girlfriend, Inu thinks of Nair and sighs as he tells him that dating is not as good as he thinks, she is more devil and troublemaker than a girlfriend. With a puzzled look on his face and excuses himself, saying that he will see him tomorrow. As Inu waves goodbye to Nakamaru and from behind Nair comes and exclaims who that handsome man Inu was with just now. This startles him to his core and yells that she always comes out of thin air. She asks him if that guy before his friend and he was telling her that Nakamaru is a colleague who entered the company at the same time he did. Nair asks if he is the same person as Inu who works at the company. He tells her that Nakamaru is a good friend and efficiently does his works and has better communication skills than him. She replies that his handsome face makes him look super refreshing. He pouts and tells her to make Nakamaru her pet instead of him. Hemp. He pauses and wonders why he is so angry at that and Nair smirks, as she laughs and asks him if he is jealous, she tells him not to worry because she won't toss his away. As she is stroking his hair, he exclaims why he would be jealous of something like this. She pauses while stroking his hair and tells him that if he took better care of his hair then he would look better. She asks him if he does not go to the hair salon and he tells her that type of stuff is in a different leave than him. He does not even go to the barber because it is troublesome that is why he always cuts his hair at home on his own. Nair sighs and says that he is a severe case of laziness and lacks basic social skills. She opens her bag and searches for something, she pulls out scissors and smiles as she tells him that she will give him a good trimming. Scared of scissors in her hands, he freaks out and asks her why she carries scissors with her in her bag. She laughs and tells him that it is the duty of a pet owner to carry the necessities. She tells him not to worry because she has some experience in cutting hair, she has cut Ginkgo's hair a few times, so she is pretty good at it. He tells her that she does not need to, and she pulls out a wax kit and sits him down. He tells her that it is not really his thing to use a hair wax because he does not want his hair to get sticky, and she tells him if he does not like it then he can take it off when he showers. She starts to put the hair wax in his hair, and he reluctantly allows her to do as she pleases, she tells him that she is going to change him into an Eichmann. She will turn him into a handsome young man just like his coworker. He tells her that he is not going to change even if she waxes his hair and she tells him it is fine and looks at his face afterwards, he asks her if she is done with it and she tells him that he needs a little more. 
She uses a concealer to hide his eye bags and uses foundation on his face as well. He asks her how much she is going to do more, and she hands him glasses to wear. Afterwards he looks really like an Eichmann and she is left awestruck. He tells her that he must be looking weird and if she wants to laugh then, she does not have to hold it back. The people that pass by whisper amongst themselves that he looks cool while pointing at him. Nair, upon hearing this becomes worried, and as he is about to look at his new look, she messes up his hair again and he exclaims that she ruined all of it. Even though she took the effort to do it. But she ruined it before he could even see if he liked it. She tells him that the messy and unkept style suits him more and he says that she is contradicting herself because before she said that he would look better if he took care of himself. She has a dumb look on his face as if she made a mistake and thinks that it would be bad for her if her rivals increased because of his popularity. Inu has learned something new when he finally is a grown-up adult, that when humans do not sleep, they die. He passes out on his table as he exclaims that his work is finally done. Now he can go home after three entire days of being stuck in the office. Once he gets home, he is going to sleep as the first thing he does. As he is moping on his desk, he gets a notification on his phone. He checks his phone to see the text, and it is Nair that texted him to play. He gives a wearing smile as he sees the text. When he sees her, he calls her name in a tired tone and Nair, while surprised at his state, asks him if he is drunk. He tells her that he is so sleepy that all he wants is to wash away the sleep with some beer. But he says this in a weird way because his words are getting slurred due to sleep, so he ends up saying that he wants to wash the sheep with beer. She talks to herself as she says that he is half unconscious and asks him to head to the park to gur some rest. In the park she tells him her day and he says some gibberish to her and she takes pity on him and tells him that they should call it a day and soon after, Inu knocks into sleep and puts his head on her shoulder. She calls out his name and tells him that if he is going to sleep anyway, he should do it when he gets home instead of here. But unable to comprehend anything else instead of sleep, he slides down his head into her lap. She becomes flustered and angrily asks who gave him permission to use her lap as a pillow. But there is no response from Anu as he lies there with a content smile on his face. She looks at his happy face and wonders if her thigh is really that food. She says that if he does not wake up, she will draw weird things on his face but there is again, no response but a sheepish smile. She smirks and holds out her lipstick as she draws doodles on his face. She laughs at her handiwork and considers how fun it is just doodling on his face. She laughs at his face which is now full of decoration. She talks to herself as she says that since she is kind, she is not going to use an oil-based pen which would not wash off easily. She considers what she should draw on his left check and as she looks at his face, still in deep sleep, and still with a smile on his face, she pauses for a bit and hears her heart start to beat faster. She blushes and looks around to see if there are people around, and when she sees that there is no one, she looks down at him and pauses and gulps nervously before putting her hair behind her ear and says that it is his own fault for letting his guard down. As she leans her face downwards towards his cheek, he suddenly exclaims and whites in his sleep as he yells out to extend the D.A. de line. Still in his sleep, he says that it is impossible to do it in short time, and he turns on the side. Now his back facing near. He snuggles into her thighs, and this embarrasses her as she panics. Suddenly angry at him being oblivious of what he is doing to her, she takes her lipstick again, asking him how dare he toy with her. But shortly after he wakes up from his sleep, as he finds himself on the bench with Nair's backpack underneath his head. He asks Nair if she is there and asks her what time it is now. She tells him that he slept for about an hour, and he gets up surprisingly fast and tells her that she should have woken him up. She laughs as she sees the doodles on his face. He asks her why she is laughing at him, but she just laughs even harder, and he questions again whether he said something funny. She says that it is nothing that he said, she just thinks that he has become a cooler person. While Inu just stares at him with confused look on his face. Jinko exclaims that since the holidays are here it is time for them celebrate. The rest of them cheer in support as they are all dressed and outside in the world. Dinko and Anu turn to each other and talk about why the four of them are getting along so well, like it is natural for them to do so. Both of them agree that it is very suspicious. Nair smiles at the others as she tells them that she was the one who invited him, he can act a guardian for them, and they will be able to prevent weird men from trying to pick them up or hit on them, it really is a bright idea isn't it? Reason nods and Anu tells them that he had a day off and he wanted to finish his game. 
but he was dragged here, as always. Jinko tells them to move forward, and though the four of them are together, to the other two him and Nier are only childhood friends and the fact that he is her pet and that she is his owner is a secret from them. He is grateful to her for keeping their relationship a secret from them. As he is thinking about all of this stuff, Nier suddenly hugs his arm as they walk, and he asks her and whispers the reasons A is holding his arm. She whispers back to him that she is leading him so that he won't get lost. He asks her why if her friends find out about them and she tells him that the sense of thrill is nice. He thinks about how she is enjoying this scenario by putting them in a risky situation and it seems like she wants her friends to notice them. Shortly after, Jinko turns back to look at them and they immediately scatter and push each other away and Jinko asks them what the matter is because they look panicked. They both dismiss it as nothing and Riza observes them silently. Jinko asks everyone whether they should do some light exercise before having lunch together and they all agree to go to a sports arcade. Nier uses a baseball bat and strikes a baseball with immense precision and strength, leaving Inu in awe when he realizes that she scored a goal. Risa tells him that Nair has a lot of achievements she has earned during softball tournaments. Jinko adds that she wishes she could support her during games. Nair comes out of the room while stretching and exclaims how good it felt to finally get some movement and sweat things out. Her friends compliment her on her playstyle and Nair asks the three of them to take turns, she turns to Inu and asks him to show how cool he can be to her, while he just stares at her with a nervous look on his face. The three of them take turns at the baseball practice while Nair observes them one by one from the sidelines. She exclaims that Jinko swings her baseball with so much strength even though she is small, you really would not expect such strength from someone like her. She also compliments Riza on her sharp parting. When she comes to Inu, she says that he has a weak swing. Inu looks back at her telling her that he can't help it because the last time he played baseball was during middle school which was well over more than few years ago. He tells her not to underestimate the lack of stamina of a corporate slave. All he does all day is sit at a desk so there is no physical activity in his life. Nair, upon hearing this steps closer to him and takes hold of his arms from behind saying that she is going to teach him how to play from A to Z. She takes hold on his hands and teaches him how to grab the baseball bat and tells him to spread his leg to his shoulder. The touch of her hand on his freaks him out from the fear that others might see and get the wrong idea. She guides him to twist his hips as he swings the bat and while she is teaching him, he feels her breasts touching his back which freaks him out and he almost screams out in surprise. He whispers to her with a blush on face, telling her to keep some distance while she just smirks at his reaction and says that if she cannot get close to him, she cannot coach her. He asks her that their secret will be exposed to her friends, but she tells him that barely exposing their secret is fun. She pats his shoulder and tells him that he can relax now and just hit the ball with the bat. He looks back at her and tells her that he will try but he really is not good at sports. While he is looking away the ball machine throws one at him and he subconsciously hits it with his bat and surprises himself even. Riza and Jinko compliment him on his strike, and he looks at his shaking hand wondering if it is the same hand that just hit the ball. He turns to Nair and tells her that it feels good to hit a strike. She smirks to herself confidently that this scenario seems like she successfully managed to teach her pet how to do a performance correctly. Upon hearing this Inu stares at her dumbfoundedly, wondering if he was taught how to do a performance just now. Nair looks at her phone, where she stares at the text Inu just sent, saying that he cannot hang out with her because he is working. <sighs> She lets out a sigh and considers that he wrote his message in Hiragana, so he really must be busy, it must be something serious, and she makes peace with the fact that she can't see him today. She asks Risa and Jinko to go home, and they both nod. The three of them walk home as Jinko says that their tests are starting next week and how depressing exam season really is. Nara says that Jinko is really the type of student who studies at the last minute and tries to cram everything before exam. Risa smirks as she suggests whether they should hold a study session together to make Jinko study and Nair and Risa laugh as Jinko says that she hates studying. Jinko notices something suddenly and points out that in the cafe front of them she can see Inu drinking coffee with a female. Nair exclaims that he is supposed to be working so there is no way he at the coffee shop as she looks to see she sees that it is in fact Inu giving a soft smile to the woman sitting across from her. Nair is shocked to her very core as Riza says that he is having tea with an unknown woman and Jinko wonders that there is no way Inu is on a date 
with a woman because it is just not possible for a loser like him to get a girl. Meanwhile, Nair panics about the woman that is sitting across from him. He thinks about how he declined her invitation, and instead, he is on a date with another woman. She hurriedly runs off saying that she remembered that she has somewhere to be. She puts on a disguise and goes to the coffee shop and sits across from the table that Anu is sitting at and tries to eavesdrop on his conversation with the woman. He talks about random stuff like the weather and asks the woman what her hobby is, and such questions make Nair realize how bad his communication skills are. She texts his phone again asking him if he is lying about being busy and if he is really working or not. But he just looks at her text and ignores it, does not even bother replying to it and this pisses Nair off. She decides to take action and uses a straw to throw a few droplets of coffee onto to his shirt. The one across him tells him that he has some coffee stain on his shirt, and he gets up and excuses himself for the restroom. When he gets into the restroom and washes up, Nair approaches him from behind with a menacing aura and he freaks out, telling her that she is in the men's restroom. She shows him a picture of him and the woman from before and asks him why he is wagging his tail like a dog in front of other girls. She tells him that he was busy trying to coax her with his idle chat. He grits his teeth at that and tells her that the woman is a businesswoman for his work. She is his client and he was only giving her his business smile. Nair is left speechless and she smacks Inu with a smile on her face for making her freak out and ringing the false alarm. She tells him that he is not cut out to be a businessman because he has zero communication skills. It is raining cats and dogs outside as Inu runs through the rain. Trying to find some place he can take shelter from the rain. When he finally finds some cover right in front of a ship, he hears splashing and footsteps running towards him and he looks up thinking that even high school girls are trying to take shelter from the rain because the rain was so unexpected. When he looks up to see the student, he sees that it is none other than Nier. He sees her running and calls out to her, and she spots him as well, saying that it is a coincidence that she ran into him. He asks if she is taking a shelter from the rain, just like she is, and she tells him that she was on her way home from school. She takes off her cardigan that she was wearing because it is soaked from the rain. They both stare at the rain for a while when she says that the forecast can't be trusted all the time and he agrees and looks sideways at her and sees her state. She is soaked from head to toe with her dripping hair and wet shirt and her skirt also soaked. He wonders why she looks sexier than usual when she is drenched from the rain. He suddenly shakes his head cursing at himself for thinking such stuff and he looks back at her and says that there is some weird color on her shirt and they both look at each other with a confused expressions on their face and they look back at her shirt and they both go silent from shock as they realize something. Her shirt is seen through because it is wet and her bra is visible. Suddenly she flushes and covers herself up and he closes his eyes with shaking his hands defensively saying that he is sorry for that, it was not on purpose that he saw her bra. Nier leans into him and calls him a pervert asking him if he really wanted to look at her bra that bad. He tries to back away from her while refusing while flustered and she says that he is behaving like a real dog. She loses her balance and falls on her butt in the puddle of water. She lets out a cry, screaming that the water is cold with tears in her eyes while Anu turns to ask her if she is okay. She sobs that her panties are soaked now as well and she feels dirty and he freaks out, telling her not to mention something so freaky and indecent. She stands up and sighs as she squeezes the water out from her skirt, which rises up and Inu stares while thanking the rain for being so generous and prosperous. He snaps back to reality and wonders if there is something they could do about this problem because she can't go home like this absolutely drenched in water and she might even catch a cold. He looks around and sees that there is a coin laundry right across the street and they head on over there. The laundry is absolutely empty and he thanks the heavens that it is free from human interaction. He says that they should wait here until her uniform dries and he will go buy her an umbrella in the meantime so she can go home once her clothes dry a bit. As he turns to look at her, he sees her unbuttoning her shirt and he panics and asks her why she is taking off her clothes. She explains to him that they are at a laundry place so they can use the machine to dry her uniform instead of waiting for them to dry on their own. She suddenly tells him to stop and explains that it is embarrassing to do this in front of him and asks him to look the other way while she undresses. He turns around and says that he will be on the lookout for people. Inu has a good sense of hearing and he hears her undressing from her clothes and he even hears the sound of a zip and wonders if she was taking off her skirt and freaks out and tells himself to clear his mind and block out the noises. He must control himself. 
Nagar tells him to turn around, and he exclaims that he cannot do that because she is naked. She tells him that it is a reward for obeying his master, so he can look at her now. He considers for a few seconds before turning to look at her, and she laughs and jumps in her jersey outfit, and he stares at her dumbfounded. She tells him that it was inside her bag this entire time, so she took it out to wear in the meantime, and teases him that he really thought he would turn around and try to look at her naked. He really is a pervert. He defends himself and asks her to stop calling him that. The rain had already stopped but Nair was having fun with her fun at the laundry store.